Hello, beautiful. Um, I'm going to try to pop in a lot more into the community and just do these recordings there. I can't schedule them like a live because my life is just like way too busy. And I literally tried to record this actually four days ago. And I'm just like finding 15 minutes to pop it in and do it for you guys. Um, but they also are going to be um, like a very advanced screening to um, some of the podcasts because as you guys know, my mission is to bring um, holistic functional fertility to the masses. So it's not necessarily just for people who can afford my one-to-one -one services or um, in, in the group coaching. Um, and I think this topic of today, everyone, everyone almost in the world, <laughs> except like a very small minute um, amount of people who maybe got brought up in a a very amazing way and probably in a way that we're all becoming conscious of that our babies need and what we didn't really get taught not by um, any fault of our parents or even our grandparents uh, just how you know life was for a lot of people um, so just a little background first um, I'll probably I'm going to start getting a little bit more woo woo on the side there. I, I have um, spoken enough about diet. <laughs> you guys know exactly what route to take, right? Finding your food intolerances, not jumping on any diet fad, not doing AIP because I did AIP and that's what got me pregnant naturally. No, finding your guys' food intolerance. Um, you guys know you need to de-stress and slow the fuck down, but I really want to bring in some um, kind of more holistic things to help you um, understand not only why that's important, but um, really relate to it, because I think that's something that's really missing is like sometimes we don't take things in because we don't really relate to it, right? Like when someone says just relax and we're like, just fuck off, uh, we don't relate to that statement. But the fact is 100% <laughs> of women who come to finding fertility need to learn how to fucking relax, how to slow down, and how to um, be less type A and start receiving. And that for us is probably one of the hardest things to do and most uncomfortable thing for us to do. So it's really hard to kind of tap into those things. Um, so I picked up my first deck of, of cards. They're not tarot cards, um, and um, this is on the podcast, but for everyone in the group coaching, you get access to the videos. Um, it's not tarot. It doesn't like, it's not like those people who do amazing jobs, like, you know, laying out five cards and like talking about that. It's, it's not, and if it is, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> like, that's not what they're for, but there's a really cool book. It's actually free on Audible. And it talks about self-care um, in alignment with um, your, your, um, your signs. So it's actually called Self-Care by the Signs. It was a free book. It's like less than three hours long. And I was like, well, I'll just listen to it, right? It's free. Um, and I personally really, really loved it. And it goes through each of the signs and it gives like a lot of the astrology behind it. So it's not the signs that you, you know, you read in the newspaper and you get your little horoscope, like true astrology um, is, is really just like energy, right? Like we all know that the moon controls the tides. So how are we not even connecting the dots that other huge things in the skies um, don't send out certain types of energy and alignment and stuff. Um, so anyways, I read that book and I'm a Scorpio and she said, one way to take care of yourself is um, going inwards. And I truly resonated with that, like really connecting um, with some like deep emotional thought um, is, is something I love doing, but I have to say I'm not very good at it. Like 
one, because I was taught like it's all BS and, you know, like, I'm like, get over it, suck up, don't cry, all that type of stuff. And two, sometimes I just don't know where to go. Like maybe my brain is just too overwhelmed and um, I, like I can't hone in on one little thing. Um, so she said, you know, just pick up a, a deck of cards and uh, draw a card, uh, read what um, the decks that I got. It comes like with a whole book um, describing like each little card that you pick up. And this deck is like absolutely gorgeous. The drawings in it um, are just so amazing. But I drew this a few weeks ago now because I wanted to record this for you guys a while ago, but I'm just getting it, um, getting to it now. And it just really resonated, not only for me, but for a lot of the clients that I've been speaking to, one of the hardest things is to receive. So we're always, um, in giving mode, right? Like we always want to serve other people and um, we almost think it's selfish to take care of ourselves and to receive from other people, right? To ask for help. So if that's you, if you really struggle to ask for help, if you struggle to um, receive anything, so even like just getting a gift, right? Like even if it's your freaking birthday, like happy birthday. And like, I, like when I give, when I get given a gift, I'm kind of like really uncomfortable and I'm like, oh, I'm not worthy of this and I don't deserve this. Like it's really like psychological stuff, right? But <laughs> it's, is really important to see these sides of yourself and acknowledge them for what they are so you can kind of understand like well why can't I just slow down like why can't that where do those issues come from and most of the time it does stem from your childhood or your adolescence you know some even if it's a, a small event or a series of consistent events that just um, led up to that subconscious belief. Maybe it was your, the way your family, the way you were raised, you know, maybe it was like always the mother's job. So you always saw your mother taking care of everyone around you. And you were taught that when you become a woman and you, be, you have like your own family, um, or even just become like, an adult, it's now your time to take care of everyone and you have to serve everyone and, and you put yourself last. Um, now that causes like a whole cascade of issues, but you mix that with Western modern day society where not only are you you know supposed to be this caregiver for everyone and your household and maybe other multiple households but you're holding down a full-time job you went to college full-time um you know you just have so many more stressors that maybe the way that this was passed down through the generations maybe didn't affect your grandma or your great grandma because they weren't like push to you know get you know super high education or an amazing job or hustle um and on top of that they weren't bombarded with like all the shitty food and all the toxins in the air so they were just better able to handle the stress um maybe even had more time to subconsciously receive in different ways um it's just a very different life and structure that we're set up in, in, in our world. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people um, within our community uh, just really need to tap into if you struggle with receiving, why? And start really playing around and working with that. And even if you struggle with just slowing down or taking time for yourself or and saying no to commitments, whether they be in work, family, or friends, you know, if it's not like a hell yes, it should probably be just a flat no right now because you need to take that time to use it for rest, recovery, things that really bring you joy um, and not just like just being on the go and, and just doing everything because that's what is expected from you. Um, a lot of the time we don't realize, and especially when you get into motherhood, um, 
uh, like these are a lot of these lessons that I'll probably be talking about. I didn't learn <laughs> during my infertility. Um, they're not necessarily things that um, you have to do to get and stay pregnant. Um, will I say that I slowed dramatically down? Absolutely. Like I quit my job, um, but I, I still was always a doer. But um, I moved away from my family. We would move every three years. Um, I got I got really good at saying no to things that I didn't want to go to. So I did do um, the physical actions I would say that you need to take. But I wouldn't say that I was like super strong in my mental health. And I was like, um, open to receiving and like, no, like not even not even fucking close what brought these things open for me was motherhood and entrepreneurship. Um, so I think it's really important if you have the time now to tackle these issues, because when you do move into motherhood, you don't get overwhelmed like I did and literally run from an empty cup and just not even, and when that happens, you can't even serve anymore. Like you, like, I know that I got like really sharp with my husband. Like I was really sharp with my kids. Like I wasn't, I wasn't calling anyone because I was just so drained. I wasn't making like any effort to like hook up with people. I was like, no, nope, the baby's nap is way more important than seeing anyone because I need a nap because I'm exhausted. And I, um, you know, I just need time to myself. But I want to read some of, um, some of the lines in this because I think, um, they're just like, it's just so important to really, um, sit with this concept of receiving. And right now it's about you giving back to yourself, you giving your time, yourself space and time to really heal, um, not only from maybe your past, but the journey that you've been on because of your fertility issues, I'm really seeing a lot now in the community and it, it probably did happen to me, but I was really good at just pushing shit down. <laughs> um, you know, the trauma of just going through fertility struggles is enough to warrant needing rest, relaxation, stress, management, you know, like all that, like that is enough. So sometimes we've got to start there and really honor what this process is, especially if you're going through multiple failed treatments, um, multiple miscarriages, um, it just stacks up and stacks up. And a lot of time we just keep going and going, right? Instead of like stopping and pausing and going, this is not fucking working out for me because we're like drilled in. You have to be pregnant yesterday, right? In our own brains and by like the medical society. Um, which is completely fucking false. And I personally believe that you're doing yourself more harm than good if you just keep going and going and don't step back and start receiving from yourself. Um, okay, so this is talking about receiving. So you have not done this enough. So your soul is becoming parched and it is drying out. Energy has been going out of you, but there is not enough coming back in. It is time to bring something back in for you to receive and be received. You are being offered a chance for restoration now to feel nourished, cared for, and loved. Accept it. You deserve it. And I think that's such a, like, such a hard part for us is that accepting that we are worthy of love. We are worthy of rest. We are worthy of help. And we do not have to be these super women that um, either we subconsciously got <laughs> put into our brain by our families or society, or even just by ourselves, right? Like we could have done it to ourselves. Um, so you need to surrender to any guilt or shame you have for needing this in the first place. It will help you to overcome any struggle that you have receiving and accepting um, so your needs can be met. So right now, your need is to heal because your fertility issues didn't just happen the moment you tried to start for a baby, right? Trying to conceive. 
most fertility issues, unless they were structural or genetic, started happening long before you even thought about having kids with your normal and common health issue. And slowly, 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 you just kept living life. You didn't think anything was wrong. Maybe you had a little inkling, but you're like, no big deal. And you just kept going and going and going. And then boom, for big fertility issues. And now you're like neck deep in fertility treatments. And you're doing one after the other, after the other. And you're not giving your ta- yourself time and your body. So physically and mentally, time to really reset and listen to your intuition, listen to your gut feelings. Um, So the more you're able to slow the fuck down, rest, recover, and receive, you actually will be able to get really in tune with where you should go next. Um, you're all here. You all followed some intuition to either listen to this podcast or join the group coaching or be a one-to-one client. Um, Something led you here and you followed that instinct to go down that (laughs) rabbit hole that you are now in. (laughs) Um, Fair warning, you might not ever get out, but it's going to be a really cool, amazing hole to live in the rest of your life. Um, But it is... um, really, really important to open, to be open to this receiving aspect of your journey. And um, receiving doesn't necessarily also mean like, oh, you need to like just welcome all the gifts the universe has to give you or like people give you, right? Receiving can even just be your own self-love and your own worth of like putting up those boundaries around yourself that you know, need to be there. um, And you don't put them up because you don't want to let anyone else down. Right. So if you start putting up those strong boundaries and honoring yourself, um, I think I saw like a TikTok and I don't know if I've talked about this before, but um, you know, say you put boundaries for someone in your life. And once they cross those boundaries, you're like, not cool. That was so unacceptable. If you start honoring yourself and saying that to yourself about your own boundaries and just let, and just think, okay, I'm going to put these up because they're for my best interest, right? I'm not doing it, you know, just to be a brat or be mean to people. Like, you know, these boundaries are there to give me a safe space to do the things that I need to do to be able to accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish. And I think they're just super valuable and something that everyone should really, really tap into. Um, So this, there's like a, at the bottom or the second page, they're like a whole like healing process. And I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna read it. I wasn't gonna read it, but I'm gonna read it to you guys. Um, so this is the healing process and, um, I guess it's kind of like a prayer mantra. I release all the false guilt and shame about having needs and all the false beliefs and rest about rest being wasteful or unnecessary. I accept, I accept healthy, productive rest and the gifts of happiness that it brings. I understand that rest and activity balance, feed, and nourish each other. So I understand that rest and and activity, balance, feed, and nourish each other. There is sacred healing that happens through rest, which is very powerful. I accept and I receive this now through unconditional love. This is now so. So I think it's really, really powerful because we are always told (laughs) that it's wasteful uh sleep when you're dead that was like my mantra right like sleep when you're dead um and unnecessary and it just couldn't be further from the truth and I think when you're in healing mode especially when you're um, dealing with fertility that's where we are at the beginning of our journey we're we're really just in healing mode 
as we um, are still walking towards our ultimate goal. For many of us, we have to do it for quite a few months. And um, some of the really old habits um, are really hard to let go of. And that's why we attach to diet and we attach to um, supplementation and we attach to um, reflexology or iridology or your acupuncturist, right? Like those are all tangible things. You think, well, I'm doing all these things. So therefore it must work where, um, you know, you you'll see in that I'm not I don't want to get you attached to supplements yes they can be supportive especially you if you have gut issues it could massively um, increase your healing potential but all the really important things are incredibly hard to do and we tend to like just see how much we can get away with um, before we surrender to okay I'm going to make it a priority to slow the fuck down, to say no thing, to say no to things, um, to just sleeping at night, you know, getting lights off at 10 o'clock, right? Maybe taking nine to 10 to have no TVs, no screens, read a book, um, you know, just really, really rest and do nothing, Um, I'm even like trying to bring this back into my life where I just sit on the couch. I don't read a book. I don't do any arts and crafts. I'm not on my phone and I just watch the world and it's so hard, (laughs) like so hard. Um, because yeah, like when you become a mother, it's like nonstop. So, um, the more you build this muscle, um, the better you'll be able to get back into it after, um, you know, the first few years of motherhood when, you know, rest and relaxation, unless you have a strong community around you to really help you and take care of you, um, when that baby's born, it's really hard, you know, we don't, we've never lived by either of our families. So we've never had um, grandparents around to help us and support us, which I know all of, all of our family would if we lived by them. Um, We didn't live by any other like family that could support us that way. And even though we had great friends, they were all in the same situation as we were. So we were all just treading water, (laughs) trying to survive next to each other. And obviously we had each other support but not like that so if you kind of know you're going into a situation where you're not going to have a community to either help you cook meals or clean the house or even take care of the kids then you really got to be super aware um, that the first few years might be a little bit chaotic you know or even the means to hire help Um, but you'll be able to flex that muscle again right so it's all muscle memory So when your kids are older, you'll be able to slide back into this just doing nothing phase and um, honoring that, honoring that that is actually a necessary and a worthy thing in life. Um, All of our ancestors did it by default. (laughs) I don't think they were, they did not have a to-do list and put rest and relaxation, right? It was all by default and um, it's just, that's kind of what I bring. Like, obviously we have the functional side and we're dealing with things that our ancestors never dealt with. But if we truly get back to how our ancestors lived and I'm not, you don't even have to go back that far. Let's say, okay, maybe 150 years now, maybe 200 years, but all the times before that, it was, you know, like it, it, you, you did what you needed to do to survive and that was it right? And you didn't have side hustles, you didn't have expectations of anything else from your family and friends. Um, So the more that we can connect back with our ancestors, I definitely think the better. But I hope that has helped anyone um, kind of struggling with receiving and slowing down. Um, I know with one of um, my one-to-one clients, um, you know, I had to have like a a pretty honest conversation or like a statement because sometimes fertility issues um, are, there's a spectrum, right? Obviously. And some are a little bit easier to deal with and some are a little less. 
And then obviously we have the age. And even though I don't um, think age should be a big factor in your fertility, it's an, it's a reality. And sometimes the reality is, is if you are older, you're like, for me, I was 27. I had the time to um, figure all this shit out. Um, and I feel very grateful that I'm here to support women who are older, who, you know, literally don't have five years, eight years to figure it all out, but you do still have a smaller window, right? Um, for various reasons. And if you're, um, able to get into your mind, if the universe or God or spirits or whatever you believe in and came down and said, you have six months to figure your shit out and commit to the commitments that you truly know are going to at least help you get way closer to your ultimate goal. What would you do? How would you act? you would act in accordance like, okay, six months, I have six months of my whole entire life to be selfish as hell, really hone in what I need to do, which is rest and relaxation, which is slowing down, which is focusing on, you know, a healthy, clean diet for me, reconnecting with the things that bring me joy, reconnecting with my partner who I'm trying to have this child with, um, and really removing the negativity of what infertility can bring into your life and just be hyper focused and unapologetic about it. So when you turn around, when you're 45, 50, you're not going to go, oh, I wish I would have just done that because maybe things would have been a bit different. You can walk away feeling proud and feeling like I've done the best that I could do. And that's all that matters. And I'm going to be able to walk away from this situation with my head held really high and being proud of my journey, whatever that journey may look like at that point. So yes, I hope this has helped. And um, yeah, thank you for letting me be a little bit more woo -woo with you guys. Obviously, you can always leave me comments and questions, and um, I will put the links um, to the books and the stack of cards that I talked about. So if that's something that you're interested in or feel like you need to go a little bit deeper and um, ask those bigger questions, but you don't know where to go, um, it's, it's an amazing deck to tap into. So have a beautiful rest of your day, and I will see you guys soon.